Hello, my friends, coming to you live from Southern California. It is, I know it's late uh, for those of you that are on the, the East Coast in particular, and maybe even in mountain time, but I'm sorry. Uh, and when I wasn't necessarily planning on going live, except for I just was getting really frustrated. Um, well, I got frustrated earlier today, and then I had a conversation with my son today that reminded me of how frustrated I was earlier today. And this has to do back with how this kind of show actually originally started. And that was all the way back in the George Floyd days when that first happened. And my, and my show, uh, the Facebook Live TV show, went from teaching people how to do live streaming and how to market themselves, how to write books, to a, a show about current events, which is what we're at now, which kind of mixes back and forth a little bit back to the old version and now a little bit to the newer version. Um, but I wanted to come on. I wanted to test out a couple things and just see how it went. And right now, one of those things is not working. <laughs> but I'm going to see if I can try one more time uh, to get it to um, to download. I'm having trouble getting. I, I wish I could explain what needs to happen right now. But uh, for some reason, I'm having difficult. If I start to get a little fuzzy, it's because I'm trying to download a file um, or upload a file uh, to Dropbox. <clears throat> and so you may... We may get a little something, something, but I keep getting errors in the upload for some reason. But um, what I'm talking about is um, uh, Joe Biden. I didn't watch much of uh, the um, the town hall or round table, whatever you call it, they did yesterday. Uh, you, of course, had Biden doing one and, and President Trump doing one. Of course, I watched President Trump um, have a his was more of a debate as we all know, <laughs> with Savannah. Uh, it really wasn't a round table or town hall or whatever you want to call it because anybody from the town hall on the, on the Trump one actually got to uh, ask any questions. But I have seen clips of the Joe Biden um, uh, round table. Uh, that was more like a kiddie show, right? They asked him if they, uh, as Donald Trump says uh, on in the rallies, is that they treated him like a little kid. Uh, but there was a question that was asked or that got referred to. And all I saw was his answer. And his answer was just spectacularly stupid. Uh, and this is what happens when you have people trying to talk about something they know nothing about. This happens a lot, right? In politicians, uh, when they're, especially when they're talking about, you know, use of force, about, um, you know, uh, uh, shootings or any type of less lethal force and how to use it, how not to use it, when people should use it, when they talk about no knock notices or no knock warrants and, and regular warrants. The, the, the people that you hear talking about it on television, in many cases, have no idea what it is they're talking about and why we even have these things in place. And so when I heard Biden, which, you know, it's ridiculous when he talks anyway. <laughs> Of course, he doesn't make any sense. And uh, we've talked about this over the last shows and his cognitive, uh, his lack of cognitive um, stability and mental uh, capacity is just lost. Um, but um, we, I want to talk a little bit about this. Again, I'm, I'm probably going to come back and do a little bit more detailed show on a little bit later on. I just wanted to share first what he said and then kind of talk about why it's ridiculous. And then I have a video I made. I did a training video not too long ago about the Rayshard, was it the Rayshard? Gosh darn it, who was it that got, the guy that um, had the knife, who uh, was a racist, who uh, fought with the cops, he got tased, and then he uh, went to the car. He, he, we believe he had a knife on him, and he had a knife in his car, and then he got shot seven times, whoever that guy was. I did a training uh, video on, on why the guy was shot and why it was a justified shooting. And so uh, I'm gonna show you a little bit of that video. All right, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna actually just show you one a couple parts from that video to show you how difficult it is from the police officer's point of view. Like I said, um, I, I heard a little bit earlier today, uh, and then my son and I were having a conversation on the way back from In and Out Burger, uh, where it just reminded me of my frustration of politicians and uh, news media talking about the subject matter, and we, they should talk to somebody <laughs> that knows what they're talking about. That's really who she, they should talk to, and say, why is it that we do these things, and what what is it you're talking about? That has nothing to do with what happened. All right, so. Let's watch first uh, uh, Vice President <laughs> Vice President Biden uh, talk about uh, chokeholds and uh, de-escalation, all kinds of stuff. And I'm going to tell you why he's off his rocker, because he has no clue what it is he's talking about. <clears throat> Excuse me. So go ahead and get rid, rid of my lower third here. Uh, okay, so uh, I'm going to bring up, I'm going to use uh, Dan Bongino. Uh, we want to pray for Dan Bongino. It, it turns out today that he talked about ha that he actually does have cancer, uh, lymphoma. Uh, and he's going to be getting some treatment for it. So prayers out to uh, Dan. I'm going to be borrowing his clip because I tried to find a clip I could use 
when uh, Joe Biden yesterday was talking about these things, but it was much easier for me to go to Dan Bongino's show. And then I'm going to play the clip of the clip, the clip of Je Dan Bongino playing a clip of, of the round table. All right. So let me bring that up <clears throat> and make it big. And then here we go. All right. Listen to what he has to say. It's like imbecile level one right here. Check this out. We can do this. You can ban chokeholds. You can, but, the, but the, beyond that, you have to teach people how to de-escalate circumstances, de-escalate. So instead of anybody coming at you and the first thing you do is shoot to kill, you shoot them in the leg. There's ways you have to do more background checks in terms of whether or not the person coming in passes certain psychological tests. <laughs> Oh, <laughs> damn, Bongino's face. There. He, had, he had the same face that I had. Um, we talked about, let me go to the board here really quick. So he talked about, uh, he talked about chokeholds, right? So we got chokeholds. And we got de-escalation of force. I only, I only did that because I can't spell de-escalation without, without spell check. <laughs> and then shooting somebody in the leg. And I spelled leg. Do you know what I mean? And then um, uh, apparently we have to do a, a psychological test before we shoot them. So <laughs> uh, how's this go? Psych, psych test. So they, we have to have some kind of like test that need, he needs to have a, um, some, a cognitive test before we decide whether we can shoot somebody or not. So the, the ridiculousness of all this he threw into, what was it? What was the clip? It was probably 45 seconds. The amount of disinformation about stupidity in those 40 seconds or 30, whatever it was, is, is huge because none of this applies to any of these events, really, that have occurred over the last, uh, what is it, four, six months, whatever the thing. We have, we've had five or six incidents, right, that have been in the news that, have, that supposedly uh, Black Lives Matter and uh, these rioting and the looting and all that. None of this applies. Because originally, I think they were talking about the uh, George Floyd thing. All right. So let me just talk about first the, the, the chokehold in regard to George Floyd. Kneeling on his neck, that is not even, that's not a chokehold. But out of that incident, right, we had all these politicians, we had all these news uh, people and all these uh, personalities on, you know, CNN, MSDNC, Fox, um, uh, what have you, uh, maybe even uh, something in the New York Times about chokeholds. All of a sudden, everybody's talking about chokeholds. A chokehold was never used in the George Floyd incident. Never. <laughs> never. It, 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 he was kneeling on his neck. That's not a chokehold. That is kneeling on his neck. A chokehold is wrapping your arm around his neck inappropriately to where you have this part of the arm against the throat, crushing the trachea. That is a choke hold. You're, you're trying to hold somebody and you're choking them as you're holding them. That is not a trained procedure. That is not used by most law enforcement. As a matter of fact, it was outlawed back, early, back in the Rodney King, but not earlier. And we have not been allowed to use it. And I've had this discussion. And I know that you, those of you who've been watching the show for a very long period of time know I did an entire show on the difference between, between choke holds and carotid restraints. Two different things, th things. <laughs> two different things, right? You have a chokehold, which kills people. You crush the trachea. You um, uh, cause their breathing um, to stop. You cut off the oxygen to their brain and, and they either die or they, they become uh, mentally, um, uh, you know, declined like uh, our friend there, the vice president. Um, and that, that is wrong. Chokeholds are wrong. All right, we don't even, they've been outlawed in, in, in California for the most part and other states. All right. And so, and then when they talk about the chokehold in relation to the George Floyd incident, it doesn't even apply. There was not even a chokehold used in the George Floyd incident, as far as I know. There might have been off camera, maybe they tried to get his arm around his neck. And then you have a crowd of restraint, which is a, which is a fantastic way of controlling people. It is a great, less lethal use of uh, dojos all over the country, all over the world are using a carotid restraint and it's being used all the time. It gets used in MMA wrestling uh, or MMA matches. It gets used all the time. People who have a carotid restraint applied to them. They go out and they call the match and the guy gets up and he goes back to his dressing room and nothing changes. His his brain is the same. Everything's the same. It's a carotid restraint. It's not blocking oxygen to the brain. It's stopping the blood flow, which causes him to pass out. And then you release it. And then he wakes back up. So 
just in regard to the chokehold and especially the way Joe Biden was talking about it. He, he doesn't know what he's talking about. We, 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 don't, we, don't try, we try not to use chokeholds. Sometimes a carotid restraint could slip and get into a choking position, but we are trained to release it if we think it's going to choke somebody because it's dangerous. People can die. All right. So we are well trained. And, and let me just talk about this thing. When they talk about police need to be trained better, that's all we do is train. We, I, as long as I was a cop, we trained all the time. There's no more training that we can do. Right. It constantly changes and we're constantly having to go to training. So anyway, in regard to the chokehold, that that is um, off the table. It doesn't even need to be looked at. All right. Uh, let me look at some of these messages I'm getting right now. Silly, you're uh, letting facts. I know I have a habit of letting facts get in the way of the narrative. I know. I am so sorry. Yes, son. How can I help you? <clears throat> carotid. Well, it, uh, yeah. So my son was just asking me, what does a carotid look like? Well, the carotid is when you get your arm all the way around the neck and you now have the V, this part of your uh, uh, arm here. The V actually protects the the, uh, tra uh, the trachea actually protects that from being collapsed. And what you want to do is apply pressure on the carotid arteries of the neck. And so when you do that, and the, the, it works out perfectly, like this arm works perfectly, everybody's arm works perfectly, where this part of the arm and this part of the arm puts pressure on the carotid arteries and you apply it, you duck your face down because the suspect will often try to gouge your eyes out and scratch your face. So you want to, as a, as a police officer, you want to put your face down and then lock it in place. And then you'll feel the person just suddenly go limp. They go limp and then you release right away. As soon as they go limp, you release right away. You get them handcuffed and they wake up and they don't even know what happened. So did I answer your question? Yes. Okay, very good. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. It is a great, the, the carotid restraint is fantastic. If, if, if Outlawing that is really doing a disservice to the suspects because then we have no alternatives, really. Then we have to go to something else and it's probably going to, yeah. all right. Um, Don Shaver, uh, police want to shoot someone instead of choke them out. Get get with the talking points. I know we'd rather kill people. We actually drive up to people, especially black people's homes, and we just shoot them and kill them. Uh, it is really a way of doing it. Uh, dude, you showed what I deleted. Learn something. Thank you. You're welcome. All right. So let, now let's talk about de-escalation of force. De-escalation of force, and and, and what he's taught. Things can things happen quickly. Right. De-escalation really only applies. And I'm not going to say it only applies, but it really only applies when you walk into a volatile situation. You got a, a, a domestic violence situation where the uh, the uh, energy in the room, the the heat in the room is super high. People are yelling and screaming. They want to kill each other. Right. They're, they're saying, I'm going to kill you. No, I'm going to kill you. And you walk in as a law enforcement officer. You say, OK, listen, what I need you guys to do. I need you to separate. I need you to come over here, talk to my partner. You come over here and talk to me. Listen, we are going to do our very best to get the situation resolved before you two do kill yourself. Um, and, and I want to talk to you about it. And I and I want to validate what it is you're talking about, possibly. And if not, maybe there's something we can. And you begin to de-escalate the situation. You bring down the temperature in the room. That is one example in a uh, domestic violence. When you are in a pursuit and chasing somebody down and everybody's all hot and body, you know, you're chasing this guy down and he's trying, he's running, you know, running people off the road, that kind of stuff. And then he crashes. There is a small window, <laughs> a very small window of trying to de-escalate something if you can. If he gets out of the car and says, I'm going to blah, 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 and you're a blah, 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 whatever. And you say, listen, listen, we, we don't want to hurt you. Uh, we want to resolve this. Uh, we would like to um, to um, to to get you uh, to a, a a position where we can just talk to you about what's going on. And you have this really small window where you're trying to use words like verbal judo. Um, I'm not gonna. I'm not saying this to say that I'm all powerful. I'll, my my straight my superpower for being a police officer was that I was able to talk through things, use humor, and I was able to de-escalate a, a lot of things through my. Uh, way of talking to people. It just, that just happened to be my superpower. We had other cops, their superpower was escalating situations. <laughs> and sometimes you go, oh no, he's not on the call with me. And you go, <laughs> and you know, you say, hey, can you stay back? Because you are going to cause an escalation of stuff. And so, but you can. So just in the case of a pursuit and all that kind of stuff, you have a very small window. If the guy chooses not, I mean, if he comes out and starts bolting to you, there's no more de-escalation. It's, it's, there's no de-escalation. There's only, now I got to protect myself. I got to somehow stay alive. And I, if I can keep him alive in the process of doing it, I'm going to do it. But if I have to kill him, I'm going to kill him. There, there's, no, there's no opportunity for de-escalation. And so when we get in the situation of the, uh, gosh, Dana, what is the name of the guy that, that got shot because he went for a knife? Who is that guy? 
Uh, somebody write it down. Did I miss it? Where's my producer? Where's producer Amy, who answers all my questions for me? Uh, where is Amy? Uh, you're supposed to be finding out who that guy is. The, the guy that got shot because he we, he was going to his car for a knife. What was his name? Verbal judo. Yeah, verbal judo. That's what we called it. <laughs> I didn't just make it up. I would like to uh, the, like you to think I just made it up. Jacob Blake. Thank you very much. So Jacob Blake. So Jacob Blake. He is a. Oh, hold on one second. Yes, children. Um. Yes. Can I use your phone for a second? Can you use my phone for what? I need the phone because I want to know us and play with them. Okay. Just figure it out. All right. So Jacob Blake. <laughs> Sorry. So Jacob Blake. So Jacob Blake is a rapist, right? Um, he has, uh, uh, he's a bad guy. Uh, the cops get there because I believe now I have, now I have to go back to my memory of all the incident. The cops get called. So they get called there. They didn't just drive down the road and, hey, there's a black guy. We want to shoot him seven times in the back. No, they get a call of this rapist who's there trying to steal the car of the victim of the rape. And in the process of doing that, the fight is on. There is no de-escalation. This thing that Joe Biden's talking about, that, oh, they could just use de-escalation. No, they're, they're in a fight. Now, now you have to, different levels of force. I think it was uh, Don talked about um, uh, the, la the, the ladder of force, and that's one way of putting it. I mean, there's all kinds of different ways that they put it, but there is an escalation of force. And so you have, um, you know, where you're talking to somebody, then you have uh, maybe an arm bar of some kind or uh, some type of hold, a finger grab hold or something like that. And then from there, then maybe you have to use some type of striking instrument. I used to wear uh, carry nunchucks. Um, I was very good at the nunchucks that I carried. You could use them for arm holds. You could use them for striking, right? You can you can use them for um, jabbing in the chest really fast. There's all kinds of different things, ways you could use um, the, um, the nunchuck. Um, but you would use some type of striking thing. Then from the striking thing, then you might use a taser uh, or it could be the other way around, depending on what is that. So you have these different levels of force you go to. Uh, and a carotid restraint might be one of those things if you had an opportunity to do that. Uh, and then you get to shooting somebody, right? And so you can skip though, like it, it goes quickly. <laughs> it goes quickly from the guy's now punching you. You got to try to grab him and then you got to try to tase him. And then he starts running and then you're chasing after him with your gun out. And then you get into a situation where you have to kill him. Right. So you have this escalation of force that can go very rapidly and you can jump from the first ladder of the ladder for using the ladder as an example. And then you have to jump to the, the fifth rung of the ladder because he skipped through those that you didn't as a police officer. You skipped through them because he forced you to. It is his decision to be shot. It is his decision to be tased. It is the suspect's decision to be punched in the face. Uh, we don't go there wanting to punch somebody in the face. It's the suspect that, uh, that tells us what it is by his actions, by his inability to follow direction and all that kind of stuff. And so this de-escalation of force that they keep talking about the news is something we've been doing for decades and decades and decades. But we use de-escalation of force when we can, and then we use an escalation of force when it skips from de-escalation to an escalation of force. You see what I'm saying? So you have a path for that when it's just verbally talking back and forth, trying to get people to calm down. But once it goes physical, there's no longer any de-escalation of force, really. I mean, you could kind of maybe, um, you know, I don't know, write it in a report. I tried to de-escalate the situation by tasing him. You could do that, but it's a really a form of force. All right. It's all, this is verbal judo, right? Back, we're back to verbal judo where we're using these words. Listen, I'm going to try to talk you down. Don't fight with us. Just settle down. Let's get this all calmed down and let's do this. And then over here, I'm like punching, 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 choke holding, you know, the taser, um, with striking weapon. <laughs> and then we go to gun. I mean, that's, that's two different things. You understand what I'm trying to tell you? All right. So Joe Biden uh, is, is a crackpot, right? And then, of course, he talks about shooting the leg. We have never, ever, 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 another ever, ever <laughs> been taught to, to shoot somebody in a leg or an arm, ever to try to wound. Never. Why? Because you miss, right? When we've made the decision to shoot, it's because we believe our life is in danger or somebody else's life is in danger. When we believe our life is in danger or somebody else's life is in danger, we're not shooting to miss. We're shooting to keep the other person or ourselves alive. That's the only reason we're shooting. We're not shooting to wound because we don't believe the person really means it, right? That's not, that's not when we choose to shoot. 
We only choose to shoot when we think our life is in danger or the life of somebody else is in danger. And if I miss the arm, what's next? The guy then has the upper hand and the if he has a knife in his hand, then he stabs you and you die. All right. There, there's no there's no um, you don't want to take any chance of missing or erroring, erroring. Right. <laughs> you don't want to have any kind. You want to miss. Um, the other thing is, if you miss, where does the bullet go? Right. It goes down down range. What's down range in a fight? Sometimes we I mean, in most cases, we try to make sure that we don't shoot it unless our background is good. Like if 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 behind the suspect we're about to shoot is a uh, is a uh, a preschool of children playing in the yard, we're not going to shoot. We are going to have to figure out how we're going to fight combat this guy who's being physically uh, threatening to us, and we think we're going to die. But we probably can't shoot because if we miss, we're going to possibly hit a children a child in the nursery. And so there's where we would decide not to shoot, even though we feel that our life is in danger or somebody else's life is in danger because it is too dangerous. What if we do miss? And we would really miss if we try to shoot a leg or an arm. Why? Because arms and legs move, right? These are all move. What do you see not moving in this picture? My legs are moving. You just can't see it. So if my legs moving <laughs> and my arms move, what's the only thing that's not moving? Tell me. I'm going to keep doing this until somebody says. <laughs> the only thing not moving is this, this target right here. This is the only thing staying stationary. That's why we shoot this, right? We don't, we don't, we don't go for this because how, how, how hard is that to hit? Right. Or if, I, if I'm running, how hard is it to hit me in the arm? If my legs are moving at the same, you can't see my legs. But if my legs are moving, how hard is it to hit a leg? It's nearly impossible. You might get lucky. You, you might get lucky. But when I'm running, what is not moving? Like if I'm running towards toward you, what is not moving? This area right here. Right. The head is also one of those spots. But again, the head is a smaller target. This is a much better target, bigger target, a much better target and a much bigger center mass. Always shoot for center mass. Always shoot for center mass. Joe Biden is a moron. Whoever told him to say, shoot him in the leg is an idiot. And he's an idiot for repeating whatever the moron told him to say. That is dumb. We've never been taught to shoot the leg. All right. Let me show you a video really quick that I made some time ago. Oh, dang it. It's not loading for some reason. Let me try one more time. Son of a gun. And it has to be, well, you know, it doesn't have to be. Let me try one more time. To... Please try again. Dang it. Um, let me just try one more time, if I can, only because the words or the uh, sound, it's not critical. So I'm going to drag it over to Dropbox. Um, just so you know, when you're using um, a StreamYard, you can only hear the sound if the video is playing in a Chrome tab. And so ah, now it's telling me it's going to take 15 minutes to load. <laughs> I ain't waiting. I ain't going to wait. Um, let me talk for Let me just go to the next thing. A psych test. Let me just talk about that really quick. And then, so to be acrobatic is a blessing. Yes. Being <laughs> that is it. Yeah. Uh, and those skinny white legs. Hey, shut up, Don. You know, you know, my legs aren't white. Well, they are kind of white. They're white on camera. Uh, they are actually tan. Kind of. Are my legs tan? Yeah. Yeah. My legs are 10. On the camera, they look white, Don. <laughs> and skinny, skinny white legs. You crazy. Okay, so it's like, so, so that was, I mean, this has to be the dumbest thing that he said. Before we do anything of use of force, we have to give the guy a psych test. Listen, listen. Totally. <laughs> Just totally, totally ridiculous. Now, listen, there is a portion of a of most, most police department's policies is that when it talks about a shooting and it doesn't say must, it says a police officer should take the mental health of the person uh, that you are engaging with into consideration before deciding what type of force you're going to use. Uh, that's all, those aren't the exact words, but it's it's a should. You should take into consideration the age of the person and if the person is mentally uh, unstable uh, or, men, or mentally retarded, for instance. I mean, if you have somebody coming to you and you know and you know them and you know they're mentally retarded, and I'm not using the word as a uh, derogatory word, I'm just using it as a descriptor. If somebody's mentally retarded, right? You know that they just they're um, a 30 year old person, but their brain is that of a five year old. And then you're going to say, "Gosh, do I really want to shoot somebody that has the mental?" Uh, um, ability, not the, the mental capacity. capacity of being, thank you, thank you, 14 year old son. 
<laughs> of a five-year-old. Do you want to shoot? You it'd be like shooting a five-year-old, right? And so you would probably try to use something else. It would it would be one of those things as a cop, like, gosh, I shot this guy. He's 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 thirty, but he has the mess, mental capacity. Thank you, son, of a five-year-old, and you wouldn't want to do that. All right, so. So you want to take it into consideration, but if the guy has a gun, right, he's got a gun and he's pointing it at you, he's got his finger on the trigger and you, it's your life or his, or he's pointing it in the direction of, again, we'll use a, a nursery school, for instance, or, um, you know, a, a, an elementary school that he's, he's getting to walk into elementary school and he has a gun uh, and he's got a little bit of a lead on you and he can get into the school and you're going to have to make a decision whether to shoot him or not. Again, you're going to consider it for a second and then you're gonna take action and it's probably gonna be shooting the guy in center mass, not in his legs, not in his arms. Now, some guys might try to do that, but again, you, you, we can make decisions, right? We're adults as police officers and sometimes we'll try to make a decision if, we, if we're really good at shooting and, we, we, and the guy's not running, but he's walking really slow. There is some of guys that I know that have, are really good shots and they may try to shoot a leg or uh, an area of the body that's not gonna be lethal. It is possible, but not when you're fighting and the guy's running and it's a very high, tense, high situation like the one involving Jacob, Jacob's ladder. Jacob, <laughs> what you, what's his name again? Shoot, Jacob, what? Uh, Jacob, you had it. Jacob Blake, Jacob Blake, remember that. Jacob Blake, right? And uh, complete, like, so you have an adult with all this capacity, you're, you're not gonna hesitate. But again, somebody with a mental capacity. Um, and then what else was there? There was somebody, the, the mental capacity, the age, mental capacity. I think there was something else, but I can't remember what else it was, but there was something else. Um, yes, son. Retarded. Well, retarded is the mental capacity. Yeah. So um, the psych test thing, it, it, really, it, that is ridiculous. They were going to give a psych test. Okay, can you tell me what two plus two is before I decide to shoot you? Um, I had an ink blot. If I had this picture, what is what does this picture look like, right? <laughs> oh, you can't see it. There's actually a picture on her. Mm. What does what does that look like? You're gonna you're gonna show them a, a series of pictures before you decide to shoot them. A, a ridiculous statement. Um, uh, it's just really stupid. All right, so I'm gonna see if this video loaded. Oh, wait a minute. I didn't get an error. Hold on. Let me refresh and see if it's on there. Oh, Farfig Nugent. No, it failed. I don't know why it's failing these days. Something's wrong with my internet. All right, so I'm gonna share just the video. Unfortunately, there's not gonna be any sound, um, but let me go ahead and, and share that. All right, hold on one second. Now, you're gonna see it very quickly. Again, you're not gonna hear much. You maybe hear something over this mic that I have right here. Uh, there it is. All right, so I'm gonna share this video and I've skipped ahead uh, where, well, not yet. Hold on, I'm gonna skip ahead a little bit further. Let me. Oh, I did. There we go. All right. So in this video, what I was demonstrating is a series of uh, and what happened with Jacob Blake is he ran around the car. Right. And the officer was right behind him. And I put the tripod in a position to where you can see inside the car. It's actually a little bit farther than where the police officer was that shot Jacob Blake. So he, he, there's actually a little bit more time and distance between where the tripod is and where I am playing the, uh, the part of Jacob Blake. Uh, and the amount of time you have to make a decision based on reaching in and grabbing something, all right? So in the Jacob Blake um, uh, incident, we know that there was a knife on the floor, floorboard and as, as with, with pre-knowledge, we know that in this case, that he was probably going for the weapon as he comes around the vehicle, opens the door and, and leans down inside to get what we believe now was going to be the knife. So you are gonna make a decision how quickly this has to make. Now, remembering the video that we all saw on television was from a camera that was about 40 feet away, maybe further on a, on a telephone pole or somebody's house. And so we're able to look at it from a much broader view. The important thing whenever watching a shooting uh, or thinking about a shooting is you have to think about what is the police officers thinking? What is it the police officers seeing? Not what a camera from 40 feet away is seeing. What is the police officer that's actually just got done fighting with this man? on the ground, he got overwhelmed by this man. He tased the man, the guy took the taser off and threw it off and the guy wrestled away and got away and now was going into his car to get a knife. So you have to think about being, um, just being, just losing a fight as a police officer that you tased him with one of your weapons and it did nothing to him and now you're pursuing him. This is a guy that's a rapist who is trying to steal a car, right? You have all that in your head as a police officer not sitting in your out eating ice cream, watching uh, the video on television. No, you've just been involved in the fight with this guy. And now you're coming into this area where you're gonna see him. So I'm gonna go ahead and make the video large here. Here we go. 
All right, so I'm gonna play this video and this is, um, and again, I'm, unfortunately there's not gonna be a lot of sound. I'll try to move my speaker over. All right, here we go. All right, you ready? Did you shoot me? <laughs> I'm a cop. Did you shoot? So this, I'm oh, sorry, let me make sure. So this is the first round, right? You don't know what I was reaching for. And when we did this exercise, what I had you do, I had people hold a book in their hand. And when they, when they, when they were going to shoot, I'd have them drop the book. Now, when I did this before, a large number of people that were viewing on that particular day ended up dropping the book because they thought I was coming out with a knife or a weapon or a gun and they shot me. Uh, when in fact I was reaching in for a badge. And this is how difficult these decisions are to make, right? When the person comes around and does something so quickly and you just got fighting with them and that kind of stuff, you're gonna make these harsh decisions. And one of those decisions may be to shoot when in fact the guy was getting a card. And we had this scenario in the academy that the guy was going in his car reaching for a card that says, I'm deaf, I cannot hear you. All right. <laughs> and we shot the deaf guy every time because he was going in. He was going in, looked very suspicious. Uh, but what he was doing, he was panicking because he couldn't hear us and he was getting a card really fast. And we ended up shooting the guy that could not hear. Uh, and this is not uncommon. It happens. Police work is not perfect. Things happen. Now, let's, what happen, let's see what happens the next time as I run this video through. All right. I'm going to bring it back up. I almost forgot. So I'll bring the video up. So I go on for a little bit there and talk. Let me go now fast forward. I explain why this happened and the differences. Okay, are you ready? Here we go. Dead. Did you drop the book and pull the trigger before I stabbed you with it? In that case, it happened so quickly that you can't see the knife. How can you... Uh, in a um, in a moment of fighting with the guy, and this again, this is what we're trained in the academy. When you're fighting with the guy and you've tased him, and now you're you're uh, you're breathing heavy, um, your adrenaline is pumping. What happens when your adrenaline pumps? Your vision becomes very narrow. It goes from being wide, like right now, I can see all the way to this one. I can see my son who's actually behind me, and I can see a picture on the left of me that's actually just directly to the side of me and a little bit behind me. So I can see all of that, all right, now because I'm calm and I'm looking at the camera and I have nothing really else to worry about. But when you when your adrenaline becomes flowing and you are tired and you've been fighting and now your focus is on that one person, all of this becomes very blurry. Right. And, and now you're focused solely on this one thing. So you're we call, you know, you got tunnel vision is what's called the name of it. It actually has a name called tunnel vision. Your vision becomes very narrow on this thing. And did you see how quickly I was able to get in there and pull that knife? And I was already stabbing you before you even saw what that was. That's how quickly things can happen. And that's why making the decision to shoot or not to shoot is is a very difficult decision to make. And then quite often we're going to choose to shoot. If we feel that our life is in danger, there's no thought process to it. This guy has already fought with us. We know that he's a felon. We know that he's tried to you know, steal the car of the victim of the uh, rape. I almost said 261. That's the code for rape. Um, and um, he was tased. And now you're chasing him around the corner uh, after he's uh, failed to stop when you've told him to stop or else I'm going to shoot you. And he doesn't stop. He goes into his car and he reaches into his car. He doesn't go into the car like he's going to sit down, right? They say that he was going there to check on his kids. He didn't open the door and like look in the back seat and say, hey, kids, how you doing? Daddy's going to be OK. I'm going to go to jail for about 10 years. I'll be back. <laughs> right. He wasn't doing that. Right. He opened the door and he was reaching down to the floorboard. All of that happens like that. Now you have to make a decision whether you're going to shoot him or not. That decision is not easy. Uh, but in most cases, whether it was the badge or the knife or the next thing that comes out, here comes one more video. I'm just going to show it to you one more time. Here's one more. And I want you to see if you recognize what. I come out with this time. All right, are you ready? Here we go. Bam! I just shot you. You see my finger? <laughs> Bam! I just shot you. What is it? How Again, that happens so quickly. There is no way. There is no way that in the world. Joe Biden is a moron. There is no way in the world that you can wait until your eyes see the weapon, 
your eyeballs see the weapon, your brain then recognizes that as a weapon, and then you go, oh, he's got a gun, I have to now pull the trigger. I know our, 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 our eyes to brain to hand works very quickly, but not fast enough. <laughs> not fast enough. Not when you're running around the car behind him, chasing him to wait and see, is it a knife, is it a badge, is it a gun, is it a car that says I'm deaf? There's no way that your brain <coughs> can work fast enough. There's exercises that we did in the academy that a guy with a knife that you know has a knife is 25 feet, I think, is the distance. I Don't quote me. There's a, it's a great training um, uh, video called Edged Weapons. Uh, um, you can look it up. There's probably a, I'm, I'm guessing there's probably a YouTube video uh, on it. It's called Edged Weapons. And it's all about how, how uh, time and distance is really critical when it comes to deciding whether to shoot somebody with a knife or not. And there's a guy with, that's 25 feet away. You can see the knife, right? And he's standing there. And you have a gun. And I think, I think you're pointing it at him. And the guy stabs you before you pull the trigger. And you can see the knife. He's 25 feet away. And the, by the time you decide to pull that trigger, you're already stabbed and you're already bleeding out and you're dying. So we, we, we trained that, right? We've already told that, that you can't think fast enough. You can't identify what the weapon is and then decide to shoot fast enough. Sometimes you have to make some assumptions and that's the way life is. And, um, you know, the, the, the idiocy of, this, of all this stuff here that was said is uh, totally ridiculous. And I hope this was helpful. <laughs> but um, it was uh, just listening to everything he had to say. None, nothing that, that Joe Biden said yesterday makes any sense. If anybody's listening to him, and unfortunately you have, uh, what is it, you know, 49, 59, 50 something percent of the, of, the, of the country that are Democrats, think what he said is perfect. They think what he said is actually, oh, well, he makes a lot of sense. Uh, chokeholds should be outlawed. Well, no shit. They, or shoot, sorry. No shoot. Yeah, chokeholds are horrible. They kill people. They've been outlawed for decades. I don't even know why we're talking about them. Chokeholds have been outlawed in many police departments across the United States of America. Um, uh, de-escalation of force. We have been using de-escalation of force for decades. It's part of our training. I was a police officer for 21 years. I retired in, two, retarded, retired in 2005. I was taught de-escalation of force back in the academy. It was taught in the academy before I was in the academy. So we've been doing this for, so top, we need to do de-escalation. No, I, we've been doing it. What are you, crazy? Um, shooting in the leg, never been taught, never will be taught ever. I know it will not ever. The cops might as well just, we might as well get rid of cops, which I know is what they want to do. But shooting in the leg of the arm has never been taught in the military and has never been taught in the police academy, unless you're a sniper. Now, a sniper on some occasion may be taught certain things about shoot. There, it, that's a completely different thing. Being a sniper is different than being a police officer on the beat, all right? Completely different things. So don't, you, it, there, there's some confusion maybe from um, some things you see in movies, um, there's some thing, confusions that you may hear about what snipers are taught to do. Don't, don't confuse the two. Being a sniper in a stationary position with a, a sandbag, with your, your, your rifle, with a scope, with your breathing, you know, to go along with it and timing and the guy not knowing you there is entirely different. We're talking about street cops that are chasing people that have to make a decision like that, just like the one I showed you on the video. All right. So shooting in the leg or the arm, not for street cops. And then the psych test, that was just ridiculous. That was a ridiculous statement that you have to give somebody a psych test before you decide to shoot them or not. Uh, completely ridiculous. Um, there's a lot of other ridiculous things that happened last night on the uh, on the talk, and um, but that's not what this show is all about. Uh, let me see what's happening here. Um, stand by their skinny legs. <laughs> Whatever. Uh, but their history walking in. Mm, I'm not sure what that was about. I'm so sorry, for, uh, Dixie. Uh, 20 foot, 21 foot rule. It could be a 21 foot rule. There, there is a rule. I mean, you have no time. You, you have no time. You need to have your gun pointed at the guy. What, what part of it was, was having a gun in the holster and then feeling relaxed that the guy was only 25 feet away from a knife. Like that you could draw your weapon and pull it out and shoot him by the time. No, there's no time. The guy is already on you by the time you even get your, your hand on your gun. That's how fast it happens. It happens so quickly because what you have to do, you're standing there. You have to recognize first that the guy is coming towards you. There's a delay. That guy already has three or four steps before you recognize that he's running towards you. Once you recognize he's running towards you, now you have to make the decision to reach for your weapon. And by the time you reach your weapon, you're already stabbed two or three times 
Um, and we, we did it hundreds, hundreds of times. And I think they even went further back than 20, 21 feet, 25 feet. Um, it happens so fast that you can't make that decision to do it. Hey, Bev, nice to see you. <clears throat> I don't know what you're laughing at me about, but it's probably my skinny legs. Uh, but it is all part of the fall. Again, still part of the you know, It is. Uh, in the movie, the bullets never run out. Oh, in my dreams, though, I ne the bullet never comes out. I, I, uh, every time I pull my gun on a bad guy in my dreams, the, the trigger won't pull. It's like I'm, I'm, I'm trying to all my strength. I'm using two fingers. I'm using both hands and the trigger. Or if the trigger does pull back, then the bullet kind of rolls out the front of the gun and then falls down on the ground. I've had both those kinds of dreams. It's horrible. Two different ball games. Uh, yeah, two different between being a sniper and a, and a patrol officer. Two different ball games. Two different things. Don't don't get the two confused. Um, should be a requirement each month. Mm, I'm sure there was something good there. I'm sorry, Don. Uh, agree that drive alongs with police. Yeah, driving with a police officer, um, ride alongs is good. I think I've told you the story a couple times. I remember a husband and wife, they were reporters with the Orange County Register. Uh, yes, son, you can. Well, I don't, what do you want me to do? My son, my, my youngest knows to ask me about ice cream when I'm on a Facebook Live. Does it all the time. And of course, I said, yes, that's how, that's how you train bad habits. <laughs> <laughs> um, but ride alongs. Let me get back on the ride alongs. So you go on a ride along. Uh, these two, uh, these um, uh, husband and wife go on a ride along. The wife comes with me. The, the husband goes with some other guy. And I'm canine. So in canine um, uh, with Anaheim, the uh, city of Anaheim is a very large city. It's, uh, you know, I don't know what, what the length of is. I can't remember 50 miles, maybe. I don't know. It's very long. Um, and there's freeways and, and, and side streets and all this kind of stuff. Well, at the beginning of the shift, when she was riding with me, the thing about canine is that we go to only we go to the majority of our calls are all in progress calls, like robberies in progress, auto thefts in progress, um, gang fights in progress, um, shooting. Did I ever say shootings? Um, you know, all, whatever, whatever in progress, high energy or high um, uh, volatile crimes, the canine would go to. So. She gets into the car, introduce myself. I tell her where the shotgun release is in case she needs to get the shot. If I'm in trouble and she need, I need the shotgun, I tell her how to get the shotgun out um, and, um, you know, where the radio is and how she gets on and, put, and pushes the mic and says, hey, the officer's down. Uh, he needs help. And then tell her those things. That probably doesn't help them calm down. <laughs> <laughs> but it's, it was one of those things. You don't want somebody riding with you all night either. It's a 12 and a half hour shift and you don't want somebody with you. You got to, you got things to do as a cop, right? There's other things you like to do. You don't like to be dragging this ride along around. And so maybe in some ways it's a way to kind of shorten it up. But anyway, so I, I'm going, here's where the shotgun is. If I need it and I call, I need you to, I need to push this button. It'll come out and just bring it to me. If I'm, if I go down, you know, here's what you do on the mic and all this kind of stuff. So I tell her all that stuff. And she goes, all right, let's go. So I get a go. So the, the first call I get, and Bev might have actually, Bev Lawson here, she might have been the dispatcher. Who knows? <laughs> uh, it is possible she was the one uh, sending me about because she was a dispatcher at the police department when I was a police officer. Uh, and Carol also worked at the police department uh, also. So um, And so the first call out of the bat, out of the back lot of the police station was out at the, uh, the West End at Beach Boulevard and somewhere. And that's not close. There is a little bit of a distance. And it was something in progress, a robbery in progress, something like that. So the right off the bat, you know, the gates opened up. I get it. I turn on the lights and siren and I'm driving down Broadway at, you know, a pretty good rate of speed going through red lights, driving on the opposite uh, side of traffic, uh, going, uh, going westbound and the eastbound lanes of traffic. Cars are pulling over and I'm getting out there. Uh, and then I get out there and I think the call got, you know, resolved before I got there. So we shut it down. Uh, and then now I'm in the West end of Anaheim and then a call just like that one comes out in the downtown or East Anaheim Hills area. Uh, and so now I got to turn around and drive another 10 or 15 miles, <laughs> lights and siren doing the same thing. And there I get there, I get out and we start wrestling with somebody and we get them all handcuffed and we get them in and we put them in jail. And then I get back in the car and then right away we get another call down in the South end near Disneyland and I get another <laughs> And the lady never said a word. Like she's not saying anything. Like she's just like like looking at everything that's going on. Like and watching me get out of the car and the call. She's watching me drive on the other side of the traffic. Woo 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 woo. Get out of my way. Get out of my way. Yelling at people because they're not pulling over. People would have they see the siren and they stop in front of you and you go, you idiots, get him over. And she's like watching me like this guy's crazy. And so then I think we had one more call back out in the west end of anaheim uh and i get all the way out there <laughs> resolve that call i swear we were only on duty a 12 and a half hour shift i think it was on duty maybe an hour and a half two hours 
and I already had four uh, uh, code three calls. <laughs> Exit the city. And uh, after only like an hour and a half, she goes, can you take me back to the station? <laughs> I think, I think I've seen enough. And, uh, we took her, we took her, uh, we took her home. I took her home. Uh, and then her husband was done too. I think her husband finished like a, about a half an hour later. They had seen enough. Um, uh, reporters really, you know, they like reporting on crime. They like reporting on happening, but being in the middle of it, uh, not, not, not so much. She was done. That was one of my favorite ride longs. She lasted an hour and a half and she was gone. Uh, <laughs> I'll never forget it. That was so funny. Uh, yes, I went everywhere. Yeah, Bev knows she would. Uh, yeah, and, and Bev, I've talked about this before. Sometimes what I would do to upset, not upset them, but drive them crazy. Sometimes I'd get a call on the west end of Anaheim and I'd very quickly get on the 91 freeway and drive as quickly as I could to the east end of Anaheim before they gave me another call. And so the last time they heard that they gave me a call, was at Beach and Lincoln, for instance. Uh, and then they would say, oh, Eddie's, it was in the West End. We just sent him a call in the West End. So that's probably where he's at. And so then they would go 3K3. And I go 3K3, um, um, uh, Canyon Rim and, uh, you know, Fairmont. <laughs> they go, Canyon Rim and Fairmont. We just sent you to Beach and Lincoln. How did you get the Canyon Rim and Fairmont? <laughs> Oh, so much fun. It was a lot of fun. And I would drive them crazy because I would do that so often. Uh, <laughs> or one last thing that I used to do to Bev and the rest of the dispatchers is that I would make a car stop. And before I would leave, uh, before I would leave the station, uh, I would go to all the dispatchers cars and write down their license plate numbers. And so for instance, this is Beth, and this isn't her license plate, but if her license plate was uh, the, you know, I'm going to write one down here. So I just, I have the <laughs> five, seven, uh, Charlie, kilo lima all right so just in case i mean her her plate might be this and so she'd be the dispatcher and i'd say uh 3k3 she go 3k3 i go 3k3 961 961 on bravo 357 charlie kilo lima and she would go and you would hear her say bravo three charlie Ki confirm the plate number <laughs> Because it would come back as Bev Lawson. <laughs> well, not Bev Lawson back then. She had a different name. But it would come back to Bev and she'd go, wait a minute. <laughs> How are you making a car stop on my car? Oh, that was so funny. That would make me laugh every time. He did all that. <laughs> all right. Or one last favorite one is, uh, is that I would make up my own phonetic alphabet too. Uh, so this is a B357CKL. I would say banana 357 uh, Chico um, kumquat, link, uh, uh, lemon, <laughs> they would go, what kind of phonetic alphabet is that? Yeah. So that was my favorite thing. Uh, yes, yes, yes. Yep. That was me. All right, my friends. Uh, I hope this has been helpful. I, I ended on some jocularity just to kind of lighten things up, but listen to me. Um, when it comes to things involving law enforcement, uh, less lethal use of force, chokeholds, de-escalation of force, shoot in the leg. No, uh, the, the, giving somebody a test before you shoot them. No, ain't gonna happen. So these things are a no. Just just uh, pretend that uh, these things don't exist. That That is never, none of those things are ever gonna happen. Chokeholds uh, have already been outlawed. In most cases, they're not used. And de-escalation of force, we've been trained that as long as uh, there have been, you know, uh, modern law enforcement training, police academies, de-escalation has always been, has always been taught. And so there's, uh, there's very little new and, and not very much is going to um, uh, be created in law enforcement that's going to change much. Now, um, the only thing that I know that needs to happen, if, if I can say at least one thing that needs to happen in law enforcement, is that police officers do need to be um, uh, held accountable. Um, and I, I've seen this in the cases. I've already told you that I investigate law enforcement officers that can that that you know uh, doing things that aren't necessarily good. I, I don't you know I'm, I'm struggling for the words, but um, officers that have done badly, right? So I I and I get those cases all the time. I know when, when cops do stuff that's bad uh, because that's what I do for a living now. All right, and so there there are some times where I get a case where an officer has been called on the carpet like five, six, fifteen times that is a cop that probably shouldn't be in law enforcement so there 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 has to be in some of the and, and unfortunately uh for democrats most of where i see this is in democratic run cities i'm not making this up uh, i get cases in chicago i get cases in Baltimore. i get cases in seattle and portland all the time 
And most of the time that I see where law enforcement officers are are kept around, even though they've been been, been investigated 10, 15, 20 times, they're still there. I see the same cops doing the same stupid stuff all the time. They're, they're, that's what needs to be done. There's police officers that shouldn't be cops. That is the truth. Is, is there systemic racism in law enforcement? No, that's a myth. It's, that's not happening. But there are law enforcement officers that are in, still on the job, that have been uh, that have been in trouble so many times. At some point, you got to say, all right, you know, this is the fifth time uh, in the last month <laughs> that we've got a complaint on you for doing something stupid. Um, and maybe perhaps that's, you know, some of the stuff. So there needs to be things done. Absolutely in law enforcement, but training, I really don't know that that's going to help. You just have bad cops that make bad decisions on a regular basis over and over and over again. No matter how much training you're going to give them, they're not going to get better. We know that. We know that in medical. We know that in, uh, you know, accountants. We know that in attorneys. We know that, that in every job. There's some people that get into a, a, a line of work who should not be in that line of work, right? Construction workers. Have you ever had a bad, per a bad um, uh, construction worker or handyman come to your house? A bad plumber. Have you ever had one? Yes, you have had them. So um, um, you just need to make sure uh, that you we we push uh, for reform in the sense that if we identify a cop through his works is not a good cop that he needs to be fired. And so there needs to be some reform. And in unions, I saw somebody talk about, Don talked about unions. Um, unions, I can't, I didn't like our union and I'm sorry um, uh, if anybody that's watching was part of our union. Um, it never uh, worked for me and it, and, and, and it never really worked. It never did, did anything. <laughs> our union was poor. Uh, it, they had really good parties. We did have good parties. Our union did have good family parties and picnics back in the day. That's for sure. Uh, but our union was worthless for the most part. It helped with our um, our contracts with getting us money. But as far as protecting us and as far as one thing or another, uh, you know, our union was worthless as far as I'm concerned. But unions do um, have a, uh, a hand in, uh, in those uh, contracts that say that, you know, cops can't be fired for doing stuff or we can't be investigated. You know, that that falls short when you do something criminal, but it shouldn't get to a criminal aspect, right? We should fire a cop before he does something criminally. Um, uh, we should be able to fire him when he's just a bad cop, when he's doing bad things. All right, so um, uh, they need more time on the range. Yep, <laughs> uh, yeah. I just was telling my son about a story of a cop that I work with and she could not hit Talk about not hitting the side of a barn. She couldn't. I mean, literally, she could not hit the side of a barn. Um, I would shoot her target for her sometimes just so she would get some some bullets in the center ring. I, I would, was able to shoot well enough that I could throw a couple rounds her way and put them on her target. When you're down range, you got the four targets in our, down, in our indoor range downstairs, and they were really close together. So I'd hit my target 10 times, and then I'd throw her like two or three rounds in the 10 ring. <laughs> so that she, so we could get out of there. If she didn't get out, I mean, we would get stuck. We go, I won't say her name, but hit the target so we can all go back out on duty and get out of here. I'm tired of, of being here in the range, sucking up all the, uh, the lead in the air. Uh, and I don't want to die of uh, lung cancer. All right. Well, there's that. <laughs> Dr. Skillmore people. Absolutely. Uh, all right, my friends. I love you guys. I, I'm sorry I came on so late. It was a last minute thing. My son got me all fired up inside and I decided, you know what? I got to talk about this and, um, and piss us off. Yeah, that was so fun. That was so fun making you guys mad. All right, my, my friends. I love you guys. Uh, God bless. Um, oh, we have a great thing happening at our church tomorrow. It's not going to be on live, unfortunately. I hope that I'm actually going to be able to get in. I know that we have, I'm going to have to get there earlier, but we have Charlie Kirk and um, uh, uh, Prager. Uh, what's his name? What's the guy's name? Prager. Prager is his last name. Uh, the, his first name. Dennis, Dennis Prager is going to be there. Um, we got uh, 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 Danny Goki is going to be singing worship. Um, we got uh, Harris Jr. No, no, no. Uh, uh, Dinesh uh, D'Souza is going to be there. Um, a number of people. A whole bunch of people are going to be there uh, speaking tomorrow. It's going to be fantastic. I cannot wait. It's going to be recorded uh, for a later time, uh, but I cannot wait to get there. Uh, but that's tomorrow at our church. Uh, um, Calvary Chapel, Chino Hills uh, is where that's going to be. All right. It's always fun. Yeah, it was fun. Thank you guys for watching. And I hope I didn't go on too long too far, but uh, I, I know that most of just my friends are sticking around now. All right, my friends. <laughs> I love you guys. God bless. And come here, son. Say hi. So my son watching with me. Uh, we went to the skate park today and he did a kickflip and some other stuff. No, I can't. Oh, what is it called? To oil.
Uh, what? Tail whip. Tail whip. I, and then I did the tail whip right after him. I actually had to show him how to do the tail whip, and then I did it myself. Mm -hmm. Not really. All right. I'll talk to you guys later. Love you. God bless. Good looking kid, you talking to me? You're not talking about you talking about me. <laughs>